Colombo, the modern capital of Sri Lanka, with its immense port on the Indian Ocean, one of the busiest harbors in the world, is home to nearly two million inhabitants. The acclaimed Jewish writer, Anne Renesang, has made this island metropolis her home for over 60 years. Known for her poetry, short stories, and essays, she has been credited with numerous local and international awards. In 2014, she received a letter from Shimon Peres, the then President of Israel, thanking her for her eloquent evocation of a dark era in Jewish history. During their short stay in Colombo, Nancy and Ron Gilly from Kisaria, Israel, had the privilege of being invited to her home. She lives in an upscale neighborhood of the city. From their hotel to her house, they took a tuk-tuk, which afforded them natural air conditioning and a more intimate exposure to the environment. Born Annelies Katz in Essen, Germany, she reminisced to them about the day at age 13 her parents sent her away to London where she escaped the Holocaust. And they told me the day before that uh, when I went to school that day I had to go to the British Embassy, British Embassy. to collect my visa. And then early the next morning my mother took me out of the house and we said goodbye, not a tear. You know, very, very controlled. My father took me to the station. When we got to the border, the Nazi came in and told my father to get out. And I stood at the window, and then he was just outside, wearing a hat and a coat and what have you. And the train started going and going and going, and went around the corner and gone. Never met either of them again. Five years went by before Anne finally knew that her parents had been murdered by the Nazis in Helmo, Poland. Looking at his photograph, Anne questions her father. You, father, stand in your heavy, dark coat against the winter tree. You do not smile. Is the sun in your eyes? Or, now I wonder, could you have known? Even today, there's hardly a day when I don't compare my life to that of my parents. In England, she trained as a nurse in the war service. And the war broke out, and my school was in a dangerous zone because England, uh, Germany might attack from the sea, so all foreigners were thrown out and they wanted to send me out of the school, but somehow I managed to stay behind, so that was the second crisis. Here she met her husband, a prominent Sri Lankan physician, Dr. D. A. Renesang, who had been sent to London for postgraduate training and who later became vice-chancellor of the University of Colombo. After I met my husband, my aunt was my guardian and she was absolutely horrified and she said well you can't marry this man because uh, he probably has a harem and he put you into a harem. After their wedding she became pregnant and her husband had to return immediately to Sri Lanka. Anne remained behind in London until the birth. I was working in the hospital anyway so they were telling me that they couldn't let me go, that I could work yes. as long as I liked, and they would tell anybody I was putting on a little weight. <laughs> so <laughs> I was putting on a little weight until I took the daughter of my landlady to see a film um, in which it was very exciting. It was a short story in which a man jumps from a tower. It was so exciting that my membranes ruptured. And that is where my first uh, son was born, June 1952, I think. We went by boat from Southampton, mm -hmm. three weeks on that boat. Yeah, yeah. And this chap screamed nearly all the way. <laughs> <laughs> so 
um, he became a champion swimmer in Sri Lanka. <laughs> <laughs> we arrived at the old harbour. We had to unload outside and men in a little boat. Sure. So my husband had to get into a little boat mm -hmm. and come out to the ship and he hadn't seen Anand at that time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he of course was delighted. He was a beautiful baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very happy. So then we had more three more later. Mm -hmm. He had three children from a previous marriage. And the children were 13, 11 and 9. And I took over that lot, plus my own new one. And after about a week of coming here, my husband said that the boss wants to see you. So then I said, OK. My husband, being totally airy fairy, said, you have to wear a sari. Now, wearing a sari is a very, very complicated business. You have to have a blouse, you have to have a petticoat. Then you have six yards of material, <laughs> which you have to drape in the proper way. I wasn't at all sure how to do that. So then I got my two stepchildren. One was nine and one was eleven. And the three of us worked on this with safety pins and what have you. And then halfway through the proceedings, I felt that something wasn't right. And then to my horror, the whole thing collapsed. Later I became an expert, you know. I had always wanted to write. I was ten years old and I wrote a Purim play. And this is the cast. And I I'm, of course, queen. a queen. And I'm wearing my mother's night. When her youngest child was seven, she decided she wanted professional training in journalism and creative writing. And so I announced to the joint family that I was going to the Polytechnic in Veluwatte. Mm -hmm. And so they threw up their hands in horror, and my husband said, nothing doing. You can't go there, and the children said, you'll never pass the examinations, you'll fail and you'll be disgraced to the family. So I ignored the lot and I went, and I had a lovely time. At this time, Anne earned her degree in journalism. Her poem, I Had Expected Tears, her first real literary success, was written in her head after seeing her nine-year-old daughter off for the first time alone to an overseas swimming meet. I had expected tears. First time alone from home, and Singapore is far away from here. She only smiled and with an easy gait walked through the door into the blazing noon. Then bursting into laughter ran across the tarmac, faster, faster, till she reached the gangway. Bounding up the steps and without turning once, she flung into the plane. And watching her break loose from all the bonds and willing her to stop, please, only once, to turn and wave to me, I swallowed down my tears. Family thing was uh, very, very important. My husband was a Buddhist and his first two lot of children were Buddhists. Mm -hmm. So we decided there was no point in dividing up the, mm -hmm. and especially as uh, there was no Jewish uh, whatever here at all. All the children had to study Buddhism, and so my husband took care of that. They learned it in school. Only one of my sons, that's my doctor son in England, he married a girl, she's a Buddhist, and they go and they pray for me pay a lot of money, which I think is a complete waste of money. Never mind. All the others are very, uh, very free living. Anne's stepson in Australia has converted to Judaism. And her granddaughter in the United States is getting married in August to an Israeli. Now at the age of 92, with 17 books to her credit, children and grandchildren scattered all over the globe, Anne is busily putting the final touches on her next book, which is due out soon. People don't realize, unless you have lived through that horrible period, the fear, the constant fear, fear that has really accompanied me all my life. Now I must be one of not so many survivors to tell the story as it really was because I think forgetting is not a good thing. Mm -hmm.